Good morning, everybody. It is Jeannie Fisher, a certified financial planner and senior 401k advisor with Argy. And twice this week, I've had potential new clients tell me that they started to evaluate the fees in their 401k and gave up because it was just too overwhelming. So I'm throwing in the towel. It's time to do it. We have to start a series about evaluating the fees in your 401k because as a fiduciary, paying only reasonable fees is one of your stated duties. Now, this is a heavy topic and we're gonna break it up into a lot of small videos just because it can get really overwhelming. At the end of this series, if you are still like this, then call us. We, no matter where you are in the country, will give you a review of your 401k plan fees for you and clearly explain who is getting paid what. But to even start the process or even start how we have this conversation, the first thing we have to do is really understand who the service providers are for your plan. We need to identify them first. And there's really four main ones that I just want to address today. The first is the record keeper. Okay, the record keeper tracks the assets in your 401k they keep the records, right? They are going to be the brand of your 401k. They will be the most easily recognizable name because it's the website that you log into. It's the name on the statements that your participants get. Most people say, my plan is with blank, and they are referencing the record keeper. Really common record keepers are Fidelity, Empower, Principal, Transamerica, John Hancock, Prudential, Mass Mutual. There's a lot of them out there. All the names that you recognize. Now another party who services your plan is the third party administrator or oftentimes called the TPA. Now the TPA is gonna do a lot of the behind the scenes work and for many of you, your employees probably never even encounter them. They will draft the plan document, they'll file the 5500, um, they will do the testing at the end of the year, they will calculate profit share. Uh, again, a lot of the administrative work behind the scenes Sometimes they may work with your participants if they're helping them process a distribution from the plan, but for the most part, really, you as an administrator are working with them primarily. Now, if you're sitting there and you're thinking, I have no idea who my TPA is, there's a chance that your plan may be what we call bundled. Bundled means that your record keeper is providing those TPA services for you. So for example, if your 401k plan is with Fidelity, they may actually be serving as the record keeper and the TPA. Now, if you can't identify a separate TPA, that means that your plan is unbundled and you have two different service providers doing both of those duties or doing each of those duties. Now, another key service provider to your plan is the advisor or the consultant. Now, there's a chance that some of you may not have an advisor or consultant and you all know how I feel about that at this point because advisors are very, very important. Now they'll be working with you as the company for sure, helping you identify and monitor the fund lineup. Uh, they may be leading the retirement plan committee. They may be providing general advice on the total health of the plan, plan design. There's a lot of different functions that an advisor or a consultant to retirement plan can do. Now some advisors take it a step further, like us here at Argy, and they extend those services to the participants. So for us, we have the Argy Blue Crew, and that means that all of your employees and all of your participants can reach out to our advisory team for investment advice and financial planning questions. So it's possible that your employees may know who your advisor is or who their advisor is, but it's also possible that your consultant is just working at the plan level and not really extending those services down to the individual employees. The fourth major service provider to your plan is the auditor. Now, if you have more than 100 employees, you may be required to have your plan audited every year. And this is just where a qualified, independent public accountant reviews the plan to make sure that everything was recorded correctly and done correctly throughout the year. Now, audits happen once a year, and they're probably a big pain in the butt to you because you have to get a bunch of data together, but they are important and, again, only required for those plans with more than 100 people. So those are the main service providers. There is one out there that I considered adding and kind of went back and forth. Um, if your investment advisor or consultant is not willing to share in some fiduciary liability or maybe not able to, there is the possibility that um, a company like a Mesero or an Iron Financial or a Morningstar is layered into the plan. Uh, uh, probably not somebody that you're speaking with directly. Your advisor would be coordinating that, but an additional fee to them to take some of that 321 or maybe even 338 fiduciary liability. But um, I would say those are less common. So those are the main service providers to your retirement plan. We're gonna follow up with several more videos on how these people are paid, how you track what they're being paid, and how you determine if it's reasonable. That's it for this video. Stay tuned, we're gonna have plenty more. Thank you so much and have a good day.